Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you today? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Thanks for asking. Of course, we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be on uh, today's podcast. Feeling good. Good to see you. By the way, you know what would be cool? What's that? If I could look over your shoulder. Oh, wait, I can. You guys want to watch how Tate works? Just go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. Look over Tate's shoulder. And last but not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. You're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings. Postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. <clears throat> Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm really excited for the round table topic because it's, it's a meaty one. It's a good one. And I'm really curious to see how everyone's going to handle this issue. So if you would, could you kind of explain to everyone what the topic is for our round table discussion today? Yes. Okay. So here's the deal. Uh, sometimes buyers can be a pain in the butt, right? Like we know that right from the get go. So they're asking for everything they're asking for, or they're saying they're going to do something. They don't go do it. Like, Hey, uh, I'm going to go look at the property this weekend, but, uh, then they don't, or they say they're going to put a certain amount down and then they don't, and then they try to renegotiate or they try to do this or they try to do that, or they try to change their doc fee or whatever. Right. Right from the beginning, like they, they just make you like want to pull out your hair. And, you know, you get to the point where you're just frustrated with them and the transaction's only beginning. It's a terms buyer. What do you do? How do you get out of this thing? How do you fix it? How do you tell them, send them packing? Or do you, or do you keep working with them? What do you do? What, what do you do when you don't just like the buyer buying from you? Yeah, I, I feel like this is like right up Eric Peterson's alley because arguably one of the nicer people on the planet he's got to he's got to have some diplomatic way of not working with people he doesn't want to work with so eric let's start with you yeah so this is this is an interesting topic it's 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 something that's not easy to deal with okay um i had a, a similar situation um maybe a week or two ago, I thought I sold the property, uh, collected down payment doc fee and made up the contracts um, per uh, the request of, of the buyer. So he gave me his wife's name and his name. They wanted them both on the contracts. I made those up, sent them over. First thing he does is email me back the next morning to say, hey, um, my wife's legal name is X, not what I gave you. Can we change the contracts? Or oh, I'm sorry, no, there was one other thing before that. First it was, um, can we get a prepaid discount? If, if we pay this off in 90 days, can we get the cash price? And I said, sure, if you can pay it off in 60 days, I'll give you the cash price. So I adjusted the, the documents to reflect that. Sent them over, then the next morning, it was the wife's name, right? It's, it's, it's this, not that. And I'm like, all right, I already redid the contracts once. Now you're asking me to do it again for your own mistake. But I was like, ah, I'm going to delay, but I'll probably do it, right? Well, a little bit later that day, he emails me back again. Another issue comes up. He says, uh, looks like the taxes aren't paid on this property. Are you, can you explain why that is? I say, yeah, it's no problem. I'll, I'll take care of it before you sign the contracts. I'll show you a receipt, whatever. And at that point, um, he emailed me back with some other concerns and he was like, you know, 
I don't know if we can trust you, you know, um, you haven't paid the taxes. I'm just not feeling good about this deal. And I'm like, perfect. I'm done. Let me refund your money. And uh, I've got someone else to sell this property to. So that one, it kind of just fell into my lap that I had the opportunity to exit. Um, you know, I think that depending where you are in the process, um, kind of depends how you can exit. If you're still in negotiations and you haven't collected any money yet, like they're quibbling over what that down payment is, it's this or it's that or whatever. Um, at some point during that process, you know, if you're getting frustrated, I would just exit before ever collecting a down payment. I would say, Hey, you know, either take this number that I'm offering or leave it. And, uh, you know, I'm fine either way kind of thing. And hopefully expecting that they're not going to agree to that. And, and I can just move on. Um, if I've collected money, um, and they're wanting to change that amount by, I don't know, taking some money back out of that or, or whatever the deal is. Um, I'm probably just going to gracefully try to tell them, you know, well, this is the best I could do on that property at this time. Let me refund your money. We'll both go our separate ways and, and best of luck, you know, in your search for land kind of thing. So it all depends where we're at in the process, but I'm, if I can, I'm going to find a way to get out in those kinds of situations. I, I like that. I like that a lot. And not a lot of, you know, you're not creating any, any ill will in either one of those situations. And ultimately you're getting rid of, of someone that you don't want to work with without them feeling like it's almost like the breakup. It's like, it's not you, it's me. I want to refund your money. Um, I'd be curious though, what somebody with maybe a heavier hand might do. The dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. What's your take? Uh, so for me, there's, there's kind of two parts to this. There's the, there's the diagnosis part and Eric kind of alluded to this earlier where you're interacting with people, you're negotiating with people. And then there's the, the true monetary transaction paperwork and all that stuff. So uh, there, there's a healthcare analogy I like with this. Uh, and as a physical therapist, when I'm interviewing somebody about their issue, uh, I need to be really good at differential diagnosis. So when, when I or my team are interviewing a potential buyer, we need to be good at determining if this person uh, is right for us. Are there green flags? Are there yellow flags? Are there red flags? And uh, through my interview, I'm going to be able to determine, hey, if they're all green flags, let's, let's go. There's no issues. Uh, they're, they're, they're telling me that they're willing to put down the dock fee and the down payment and agree to the monthly payments. They're going to put more on the down. They're very agreeable. I, I give them documents that support my legitimacy. They don't give me any heck. You know, uh, if it's a tax issue, I pay it off. They're fine with it. Green flags all the way. And then you have yellow flags. Well, you know, I want to live on the property. Well, no, you can't do that. Um, hey, can I adjust the pricing? Uh, I mean, I might wiggle on the down payment a little bit, but this is all I'm going to do. That type of thing. So I might work with those people. And then you have the red flag people. Uh, they're looking for a place to live tomorrow. They, they, you can get a sense from them. They, they even say to you, I'm, I'm on disability or I, I'm on social security income, that type of thing. You know that their monthly income isn't stable and that may lead you to believe that they might not be a good customer for you. Can so I that's the recording part. fee. Yeah. 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 And then the second part is after you've, you know, uh, after you've committed to a contract with somebody, um, uh, you know, I think it all depends on where you are in the process. We've had people pay a doc fee on our website and then it becomes a major headache and we just say, Hey, let's, this isn't going to work for us. I'm refunding you. If they've signed the paperwork and that type of thing, uh, we just try to be, you know, no nonsense about the fact that, Hey, here's the paperwork we signed. Uh, and if we feel that they're going to be a headache, we, we do not work with them, uh, you know, significantly. Um, unless we get a good feeling about the relationship. No, I, I, I love that. I, I love the, uh, the differential analysis too. That's, that's a really cool geeky way to think about it. But speaking of cool, speaking of geeky, speaking of scary, this is somebody that I would not want to upset is the terrorist hunter Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, what, what's your thoughts? 
Well, I have to tell you a situation that I had. I sold or thought I sold a terms property, 20 acre property. It's one of the most expensive ones I've ever had, like $32,000 property, okay? A couple pages of down in the dock, and, or no, the dock. They signed the paperwork, okay? And a couple days go by and I haven't gotten it down. And I get a phone call from this young guy, says he's the neighbor, that he met these people. They said that they're both convicted felons and that they want to live on the property. They have five children, three of which are under the age of three. They have a very broken, um, rusty old van that they want to live out of that has broken windows. So I'm thinking in my head, one-year-old baby wakes up in the middle of the night or two-year-old baby wants to go to the bathroom and there's waist-high snow. <laughs> where, where, where are the, I was a little stressed. So I called him up and I said, hey, I haven't got your down payment. It's been three days. I hear you want to live on the property that is, you know, violation of the county laws. I'm going to have to send your money back. So they, for, they pay, they send me the down payment through PayPal and I send it back because <laughs> I'm paranoid. And so they hire an attorney. So then I get a summons, a complaint. Um, I, oh my gosh, I was so stressed out. And I called the attorney, do you have children? Do you know these people want to live out there on the land with their babies in the van with broken windows and 20 degree weather? He thought Dad I was just some um, rich person, clean. right, that uh, was taking advantage of these poor people. And so right. I, this is what I did. I said, how about this? I have a $5,000 property. I'll give it to them half off. That way they have the deed. They can do whatever they want with it. He said, okay. And so I learned, one, I changed my note to have like a 72-hour time limit. If you haven't paid, by that it's, that it's defunct. And uh, I also gave these folks until Sunday night close of business to either take that property or not. And they didn't, but they were then gone. So stressful. You know, that's crazy though that they're getting an attorney involved. Like you can reserve, oh. reserve the right to refuse to work with anyone you want. You're not obligated. You own the land. I don't have to sell you the land. They said that the note was active, was in effect because they'd signed it, but they hadn't paid the down. Yeah, there's there's no note until it could be consideration. This attorney is terrible. Yeah, so I, for, this went on for like three weeks. I was so stressed out. But yeah, so we found an agreement, right? I, I mean, I offered them a, a more affordable option. I was willing to give them a big discount to get them to go away. But. Wow, if that ever happens again, please box me. I'd love to uh, get involved on Thank that. You. I appreciate the help. I'd be happy to ease the stress. But okay, but but fundamentally speaking, getting back to the issue though, how do you handle, besides these, uh, besides obviously an anomaly, how would you gracefully sort of get out of a transaction? Well, if it's a, what they want to do is against the county regulation, that's easy to do. Just slide them their money back and tell them and, you know, send them the county reg, right? And, we're, right. I, and honestly, I was willing to negotiate a different deal for them that worked, that did work for them. Okay. I mean, you're, that's a big heart to work with ex convicts with young kids and not, not, not making good choices. Like where's the, you're not making good choices in life clause. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's, let's hear from Tate. Tate, what about you? So, you know, I, I love the, uh, it's not you, it's me conversation. It doesn't happen very frequently, but I have had to fire a few customers before in the past. And, you know, typically that conversation sounds a little bit like this, you know, Scott, I really appreciate working, you know, having the opportunity to earn your business. But what I've realized is we cannot deliver the quality of service that you are expecting. As a result, I'm going to go ahead and issue a full refund. Every penny you've given us will be refunded to you. And we're going to part our ways going forward. Um, a lot of people are uh, okay with that when they find out they're getting all their money back. Some people will push back and be a little upset with it. Obviously, you can't just, you know, 
void a contract, but, uh, you know, if, if you can let them know like, Hey, this is not going to be the start to a beautiful relationship. And I don't think it's based on trust. Obviously you're not confident in the documents that we're sending you. So as a result, let's prevent any headache and let's part our ways. And people respect that, I think. So that's typically my method for getting out of something. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we do. But honestly, it's not something that we see on a weekly, monthly basis. It's pretty rare that I can't get along with somebody. I mean, for the most part, if you make your monthly payments on time and aren't breaking the rules, we're going to be good friends. That's fine. Welcome to the, welcome to the family. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still getting upset about the whole Mimi situation. I don't, I don't even like that she gave him the discount on another property just to make him happy. What, what would you have done in that situation? In that situation? Oh, I would have had at it with the attorney. You know, well, I would have loved it. This part, the neighbor set up a video camera and had video camera of them chopping down wood on the property. Yeah, they started defacing oh the property. Gosh. I know. I was so stressed. I would have this, loved at this point, like, get, like, fire up the drone. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like Mark, I was sitting there licking my chops because this could have been fun. I got nothing better to do. I would love to have a phone call with that. <laughs> yeah, Tate and I would just let, let us handle that from now on, please. We, we, <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I'm going to pass all, you on to my representatives, my personal right. representatives. I, I, Scott, like, you Scott of, will just yeah. get jealous. Like, Scott, I can see him. He's like, wait about, don't forget me. I want in on that right. too. I want in on that. Well, yeah. I actually had a uh, I had an attorney once call because uh, we had we had purchased some um, some land from somebody that had some notes on it, and the lady was making the payment every month for her son, who was in prison. Okay, so like every month she was making the payments for her her prison bound son, and she was literally I I would see her name. She would call every month, and she was a pain in the butt. Like I I couldn't stand her just to see her phone number. Okay, and one day she says to me like, I don't think I should have to pay this thing. And I'm like, well, you know, it's your son's responsibility. Why don't you pay it for, well, why don't you make your son pay? And that's when she told me like, you know, he's in prison. I'm like, well, it sounds like, it sounds like it's his problem, not your problem. You know, and I'm thinking like, please just do something. Like, please go away. Well, then one day the, uh, the attorney, her, her attorney calls me and he's like, hey, listen, uh, we want to see the note that was signed by the son. And I'm like, well, turns out we don't have the note. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. And we didn't have the note, like, because we thought we did, but we didn't. So I went back to the people that we bought the deal from, and they're like, well, we don't have the note either. I'm like, hey, man, we don't have a note. He's like, you don't have a note? Then it's not enforceable. And I'm like, well, what are you saying? You're saying that your, your client's not going to make any more payments? And he's like, well, what are you going to do? Sewer for the payments? And I'm like, no, does she not want to make the payments anymore? He's like, well, she's not going to be making them until you produce a note. And I said, okay, no worries. Have a good day. I'm like dancing, like jumping up and down. I got rid of the lady. They think they're, they think they're stick fin me. And I'm like, let's wholesale the property. We're done. Yeah. Just, so, just from, just from a side, if you're listening to this and you ever get an attorney letter, an attorney call, just know that 90% of their effectiveness is the intimidation tactic. So from a legal standpoint, 90% of the time, they don't have a legal leg to stand on in this business. We have contracts, there's, there's laws involved. Like, like it's just intimidation to kind of get what they want for their client. And it's, there, there's no reason to stress out, panic, hire an attorney because they, they know deep down what they're doing. <laughs> it's just a game. They're, they're not emotionally involved in this. Their client is, and they're getting paid by their client. So you can ignore them. You can just email them. You don't take up any of your time, say, no, I disagree. And let the client pay as much money to that attorney as they want. When all of a sudden they realize, they start doing the math, this is not worth it. And I'm gonna lose. So just an aside, you know, 20 years in the business, you know how many times I've been sued? Donut. 
Donuts, baby. Donut. Oh, no, there's I love a reason. Donuts, man. Donut. Yeah. So it's not, a, and usually in real estate, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Just say, look, I'll, I'll, you know, no worries. I'll refund them. No problem. But let that client, that, the, let that attorney make some money. Drag it out a bit. Anyways, Scott Todd, do you have any, yeah, other, any other insights for us? I would, I would just say, look, you, you, if you're going to do anything, like be, be honest with the person, right? Like it, it's, it's no problem by saying, hey, listen, um, early on, if you, if you don't like it, you don't you got the spidey sense, whatever, there's no issue with saying to them, hey, listen, what we're about to enter into here is a long-term relationship, right? Like you and I are going to be partners here while, while we pay down this note together, while you make the payments, basically, you know, I, we're going to be working together. And my best customers uh, are the, are the ones that just like the deal as it is and do what they say they're going to do. And those are my best customers. You know, like when, when someone tells me that, you know, you're going to put down X amount of money and then you don't, and you, and like now you want to renegotiate those are not great customers and then it always ends does not end well it, it always ends badly so in order to spare you and i pain what we're going to do is we're going to part separate ways i appreciate your interest in the property and if they did make a payment hey i'm gonna refund the money to you and just be done with it and don't worry about looking back because ultimately ultimately they uh they're just pain in the butts and they don't they don't mix with your style and that's just the way that it is. No, absolutely. And before we get to our tip of the week, I just want to remind everybody today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks of your life can be transformed. One time sale, start getting that passive income, start building your wealth, start building a passive income machine, but do it quickly, safely and efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa going up that mountain. Learn more, go to the landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a free call, strategy call with Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG Scott Bossman, or the Zen master Mike Zeno. Again, the landgeek.com forward slash training. So I, I do have a tip of the week, by the way, based on this, conver on this conversation, but I'm certainly not going to rob Mimi of it. Mimi, do you, do you have the tip of the week this week? Of course. Yes, I do. All right. Well, I, my other tip is a, a really good book to read is Difficult Conversations because it really does apply to a lot of what we're talking about. And the other just quick tip is when you're talking to people that are difficult and that you don't want to work with, never, ever start with you. Always start with I. Always make it about yourself. I'm not comfortable going forward with this because based on my experience, this is a long-term relationship. And I feel that just the way we're starting, we're getting off on the wrong foot. I want to refund you. I want to make this right. There is a company out there I know can make you happier than me. Landopia.com. Contact Eric Peterson. He is a fantastic person. You're going to thank me for that. His property is beautiful. He has the same guarantee as me. It's a legacy. It's a tradition. We're going to part as friends. Thank you so much. And uh, I wish it could have worked out. And so it's I, I, I. It's never, you're being difficult. You know, you ask, you're asking for too much. Then they're going to get defensive. So start with, so do that. Okay. That was my little monologue there. Um, Mimi Schmidt, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the our passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? I'm so excited. For all of you Facebook Marketplace sellers, the number of views are back. They went away. I don't know why they went away, but they're back. If you go into the selling section, it'll show you all of your Marketplace ads. It'll have the title. It'll say listed to Marketplace, and then it'll say the number of views. So now you can track your metrics. Howard, how do you track them? In Airtable, all of the Facebook ads, right? When the posters go to post, they have the number of views and the number of comments or messages that we've gotten. And then we can determine if the ad is working and if it needs to be renewed or dumped. Okay, right. so I'm gonna play devil's advocate for Mimi, all right? Like, just because no one ever pushes back on Mimi's tips of the week. So here we go. Mimi, 
why does it, why would I care how many views this one has? Like, why not just put the ad up there and let it be up there to the end of time and go do another one and another one? To me, they're like mini billboards. I just leave them up there forever and ever and ever. Why do I got to take them down? I guess I see them as a leading indicator. If it's got, if it's not getting any views, just again, don't do it. You could, right? You could keep it up, renew it also, what, five times for seven days each, 35 well, I wouldn't days. Even renew it. I would just leave it, right? Like, I'm going to leave it when Facebook decides they want to clear out their database and take it down. What do I care? It could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Why can't I just have this one up there and then I can put up another one tomorrow for the same property? What does yeah. it matter? You can, well, it'll only last seven days. It'll go away in seven days. And so the posters oh, okay. come in weekly and they determine what they're going to renew. So they can renew it if it's, I mean, it's, they can always renew it. What I'm saying is, marketing. I know I don't look at the views or the metrics. I think that's just, in my own opinion, it's just me being me. What do I care how many views it has? I'm just going to put up another one tomorrow. That's the way I think about it. Well, I see well, it as a troubleshooting, right? If people aren't getting the sales they want, where do they need to post more? right? That's what I find with my coaching students. So I tell them to go back and look at the views and the messages, and that's where they need to post more, right? Don't yeah, go yeah. spending all this time for your VA posting in cities that aren't working. Yeah, Mimi, Scott's just being difficult. I've got two counter arguments to his, but before I do, I think Eric Peterson's probably going to want to jump in here and come to your defense. Eric? <laughs> <laughs> He's not. He's, He's not. not. Um, He's no, not. I mean, I think that the, I do agree with Scott. Like, I will leave my ads out there as long as I can. I'm not going to take them down. But oh, I, I do think that you can have some, some value from the standpoint of if you're posting that, that Colorado property in Denver and you're getting 100 views, but you post a very similar ad in, I don't know, Houston and you're getting 600 views. I mean, if you look at it compared to the time the ad has been out, you know, that gives you something to, to kind of investigate. Like, why is that Houston ad getting so much more traction compared to the one I put in Denver? If the content is more or less similar, you know, maybe it's just the market. The market in Houston likes that property in, in Colorado better than, you know, in Denver, or it stands out more, so they're looking at it. But, um, that's, I mean, that's kind of how we use the views if, if we're going to look at them. Tate, you want to come into it? You want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Mimi. This is, this is good news for me. I, I track this stuff. I'm a metrics geek. I want to know if my ads are going viral, if they're serving their purposes, because if they're not, I want to be able to make changes. Uh, I do understand from Scott's perspective where it's like, what do I care? The results will speak for themselves. If it's a good ad, people are going to respond. If it's not, I'll make changes next time around. But uh, for me, this is good. I want to know these kind of things because uh, in my opinion, one of the hardest things about marketing is it's hard to get a lot of feedback uh, as far as attention and views and whether or not it's working. And so the views kind of give me an insider look at that. Yeah, Scott Bossman. You're on sorry, about, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so, so for me, there's, there's a correlation here, right? So typically the more views there are, the more conversations there are. And what I care about are the conversation because let's say I sell a property and then three weeks later, I get another one down the road. I'm going back into Facebook marketplace and I'm hitting up every single person in that feed who I've already had a conversation with, or we've already had a conversation with. Um, so that for me is the most valuable thing in Facebook marketplace is the number of conversations and I can go back to them later uh, if that ad is still live. So that's, that's important for us. Yeah, I mean, when you're as wealthy as Eric Peterson and Scott Todd, you kind of get complacent. You don't care anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, this one has 100 views. This one has 20 views. Who cares? They're all going to sell. I don't care, right? But there is something out there called disciplined management. And whatever's measured is managed. And there's also something called the Pareto principle. So I want to know what 20% of my ads are producing 80% of the results. I just want to know. Oh, I don't know. Call me a management snob, Scott Todd, if you will. You know, call me a metrics geek. But Microsoft going downhill now. really had an excellent uh, case study of this in the 80s. 
They were making so much money. There was no competition. You know what happened? They stopped developing. Their products got old. They got they had this, this legacy thing. And, you know, we all remember Vista. You know what you, you, know what you got here when you start man, manage, managing the ads and the views? You got Vista. And then who comes along? Apple. Disciplined, great management. That's what Sleek. happens. Sleek. Sleek. Easy. Yeah. I mean, so, just friendly. User you know, interface. You so know what I'm I, doing I, right now? You know what I'm doing right now? Is I'm touching my screen right in front of me and I'm like doing everything I need to just by touching, moving things around, whatever. How's that working out for you guys? It's great. I don't have oil prints all over my screen. The screen's clear as a bell, man. Clear as a bell. Mm. Just saying. Just saying. It's all good. See? Yeah. See what we're doing here? Okay, but again, I think there's a lot of good management lessons in here. Scott, Todd, I'll send you the Peter Drucker book uh, about management. That's, oh. that's his famous quote. You've heard of him, the management guru? I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've studied him quite a bit. Thanks. Yeah, so, yeah, so if, you're, if you're listening to this and you don't own a plane, maybe worry about your metrics. When you own a plane... Leave wait, a minute, wait 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 a minute. No one, no one said not to care about metrics. No one said anything about not caring about metrics. I'm simply saying like, <laughs> what, what I find is that too many people worry about too many little things. Oh my gosh, this one only has a hundred views. Who cares if it has a hundred views? Go write another one. Okay. Go write another one. That's all I'm saying. But you know, too many times people are, they, they want to dig down. They, what they should be doing is they should be marketing more, not, oh yeah. man, this one has a hundred. That's not what no. you said, Scott Todd. This is what happens though. I you, have you said, to. oh, I just leave my ads out there. I don't look at the I, views. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying, too. what I'm saying is I don't look at my views, but because guess what? A view is not going to do anything for me. You know, what, you know what matters? How many leads I get. That's, that's all right. I'm saying. Like That's the, right. The view, but they'll, they'll spend time having VAs post ads like to walk into these bizarre remote places. Wow. And they have to go look and see which cities are working and have their VA spend time where it's good. Well, instead listen, of wasting I, got, their time. I got my own take on that one. Is You can actually, like, it's very simple. Mark even mentioned it. 80-20. Go to the big cities. The big cities is where it's at. Podunk, Podunk in Kansas is not where it's at, right? Like, go to the big cities. Because guess what? That's where the population is. Go where the population is. It's simple. I don't know. I'm just... Just saying, yeah. just saying. I want to personally apologize to those people in uh, small towns in Kansas. <laughs> okay, can we just end this call now? <laughs> this has been so much fun. Sorry, it's spiraling out of control. And, uh, you know, there's you been, uh, you know, a lot of you don't know the backstory of, of my um, pent up resentment with Scott Todd yesterday. Uh, a whole razor thing got brought up again. And of course, I cut myself shaving well, and it was, it was shoot. instant karma and Scott Todd got the best of me again. Uh -oh. Let's, let's talk about what brought the shaving thing up. Shall yeah. we Mark? I get, I get a, an email that says, Hey, Mark, Mark, uh, a package, uh, a gift from Mark has arrived. And I'm like, what is it? And I go to my, my family. I'm like, I wasn't home at the time. I'm like, did I get a package from Amazon? They're like, yes. I'm like, what is it? And they're like, it feels like the size of a TV remote. And I'm like, a TV remote? What? And the, the email said, saw this and thought of you. And I'm thinking, a TV remote? Hmm. I come home and I tear open the bag and I remove the, the TV remote and it's not a TV remote. What is it? It's called the razor pit. And you take your big razors here and you rumble across this thing and you shave them and you get 150 shaves with one blade. Well, Mark thinks that this is what I'm shaving with is a big razor, but I don't own a big razor. So I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so then I'm like, Mark, you got this all wrong, man. So then it fuels up the razor debate again in a private uh. message. And then Mark calls me and says, Hey, um, cut myself like three times shaving hey did you cut yourself today no no oh. didn't shave but
Just saying, Mark. Just saying. And I won't even tell the world the next part of it. I'll leave that for you. I, I appreciate it. And uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to our shenanigans. Hopefully you're getting a lot of value from the podcast. If you are, the three best favors you can do is subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less. All right, we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad, actually. I think it's much better with Zeno not here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, we can't say that to Zeno, but. No, we can't say it. Well, he's not here. That's why we're able to say it. Yeah. <laughs> do you think he'll, he'll, do you think he'll go back and, and, and listen to this and be like, Mock Scott Todd was ripping on me because I don't say let freedom ring the same way you guys do. <laughs> no, uh, knowing Boston, Boston will be like, hey, Mike, sure, what Scott said about you to create some more conflict. That's what he'll that, do. That is true. Boston will he'll bait us. He'll, he'll bait definitely us. be stirring the pot. Yeah, he, he right. will. He will. I, I don't doubt I'll just, that. I'll just wait for tomorrow night. And that's when I'll bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, I'll be getting, I'll be getting boxed that hey, uh, Mike Zano is showing you with sandals on and on vacation and I'm going to have to like go and work some magic mojo on Zano again. Yeah. Just, I don't know. We'll All right. So, so just so you guys know, I did, I did finally relent and I'm going to try the Scott Todd Mike Zano razor. And Tate Litchfield razor too, by the way. And the Tate yeah. Litchfield razor. Because, and, and honestly, it's out of my deep respect for Tate because I know he takes his shave seriously. That I'm going to try this thing, okay. but I do Mark, I would, like my my supply razor. Mark, I would never lead you astray, man. All right. Well, yeah. You're gonna I mean, like I it. Think, You're gonna I like think it. yesterday, like that that cut after I was making fun of Scott. <laughs> that that yeah. just was was just saying, you know, the universe saying, hey, man, he 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 might be right. He might want to get the razor. We'll see. We'll see. When's it going to be there, Mark? We'll see. Uh, I did. I did Amazon Prime, so it should be two days. I'll okay. I'll let you guys know. Good deal. All right, Eric Good Peterson. I, I know we've talked about this, but what are you shaving with? Just an electric razor. Okay, I know so you guys all laugh at me, but I don't really for shave. Graders. Like I just, I always just leave scruff. Like I don't go to the skin. Mark, we need to end this call. Maybe. Right Dave what, got what you, here for Father's Day. What What did he get? Did he get the uh, Scott Zeno. Tate yeah. one or, or yeah. he did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does he like it? Yeah. I, well, y'all gotta wait till Father's Day. Week and a half. <sighs> we gotta wait. Yeah. Great. If he listens to this podcast, now you just told him what he's getting. Oh, he already knows. He opened up the package. He goes, What's this razor for? I go, Are you are you kidding me? It's three weeks till Father's Day and you're opening up the Amazon packages? Dude, help me out. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, it's sitting upstairs with the rest of the stuff. You let let him use the razor, and then then for Father's Day, get him some accessories, like the Tate right. shaving cream, mm. the Tate shaving oil, Rose. a nice badger skin brush, or a badger, badger skin hair brush. brush. Yeah, okay. silver silver tip badger. The silver, silver tip, tip badger. Badger brush. I'll check it. I'm on yeah. it. Yeah. Bossman, what about you? I'm just a Gillette Mach Five guy. I, oh, I love yeah. that razor. Yeah, you're you're definitely the, one of those. Hold on, he needs something. Mark. Mainstream guys. <laughs> yeah, send Mainstream. that to me, would you? Because I could maybe use that. <laughs> you sent it to the wrong Scott, Mark. You yeah. sent it to the wrong Scott. Forward it to me. All right, get, send, send that on to uh, <laughs> the bossman there. Who's paying me the shipping? <laughs> I'll I'll just just PayPal me. I'll pay it. It's fine. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. look, Scott, right. Scott's got to save all his money for fuel. So, yeah. you know, okay. Listen, while we're still chit chatting, I guess we still have time to chit chat. Guy buying land, <laughs> guy buying land from me. He's buying land out in a very popular county in, in Colorado. He's buying 15 acres or so. He calls us because we haven't like, He's been making payments or anything, but he calls us and says, hey, listen, um, 
I'm one, this is serious, by the way, I'm not trying to laugh at him, but like, it's just some of the stories that you hear about in this business, right? Guy says, hey, listen, um, I need to see if you can give me another piece of property, um, not this one. I love this one, but this one is, is no good. Like, I got to move. And we're like, okay, well, what's going on? And he's like, well, the neighbor, the neighbor uh, out here, now remember, he's on 15 acres. The neighbor got mad at me. And he's like, the neighbor, uh, about a month and a half ago, the neighbor shot me twice <laughs> okay with, with an a with an ar-15 oh he got me in the shoulder and in the gut so i've been in the hospital and my wife said we're not living here anymore like so we're, we're we like they weren't living on the property but they were just out there like on a regular basis and we're like wait a minute why did the neighbor shoot you and he said because he said he said that I was the uh, I was the only crackhead around, so he had to take it out on somebody. So he shot me. Like these are the stories that we hear sometimes from our customers, right? Like I can't imagine. So we're we're rapidly trying to find another property for him. And if you'd like to buy 15 acres for one of your customers, maybe it's a pain in the butt customer, I might be able to help you. That has anyone else ever had any any of their uh, anyone else get shot that they were working with? I've no. I've had people die on me who are, who are making payments, but I've never had anyone shot. That is a never, first. Never heard of it. It's wow. nutty. That's nutty. I have no words. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. <laughs> Holy I cow. will have 15 acres available wholesale soon. <laughs> that's nuts. That's. Do I have to disclose that? Yeah. No, I, I mean it's not like a house where you have to like disclose mold. Hey, the, I mean, isn't that, isn't that guy going to go? To, isn't that guy going to go to jail? Uh, I think so. Yeah, might be cleared now. I don't. I don't know what that. I mean, you might say, "Hey, look, don't don't smoke crack on your 15 acres." <laughs> Yeah. All right, Mark. We good? It's a, it's a, All right. Yeah, we good. Guys. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.